This is for topic area four, creating a marketing mix to support a product. And this is 4.10, types of pricing strategies. Now there are four different pricing strategies that you need to be aware of for this course. And basically we are looking at each of these individually. So basically when you've considered all of the factors that influence a price, which we did in 4.1, once you've got a rough idea, you can then come up with different strategies for how you are going to charge for those products. So you might have a long term goal in mind for your price and then you might start applying these particular different strategies. So I've categorized them into long term and short term categories. We need to know these four different things. First one is competitive pricing. Now this can take place in two different levels really. First one is you can compare it with any other similar products. And that could be what you come up with for your recommended retail price. So Coca-Cola for example will come up with a recommended retail price for their cans. And so will Pepsi and they will be very very similar. Then it's down to the actual shop to decide on a price that they are going to charge. So competitive pricing is where the price is set similar to what competitors are charging. This technique is often used in supermarkets where they are match items to other shops and this takes place quite regularly and they do it in a competitive way so that they can try to entice more customers to move to their store. You might see this all the time in TV adverts where they will compare their prices to an other supermarket brand. So the advantages of competitive pricing are that you kind of already know that your customers are going to be willing to pay that price because they're probably paying it in another shop already. Another advantage is that you know that people are not going to choose another brand or another, sh another shop just because of the price because if your prices are competitive they're not going to choose another shop just based on price. Disadvantages are that you can't always guarantee your costs will be covered. So if you set your prices the same as your competitor, but you're not making a profit, then obviously that's not the best idea to do it. Another disadvantage is that you can't really use the price alone to attract the customers unless you are advertising it at a lot cheaper than your competitors. Psychological pricing, best example is shown in the picture, 399.99, that's the easiest way of remembering it. It's when you apply some sort of psychological approach to the price, so it's designed to make it look like it's cheaper than it actually is. So psychological pricing is where setting prices in a way that is designed to influence customers' perception in some way. So in this example, it's, it's trying to influence the customer to think that it's cheaper, trying to show that it's less than £400 when really it's only one pence cheaper. Now this can be called charm pricing. Another example is where you see it where it's £99 instead of £100. So even though it is £1 cheaper, it's trying to kind of influence you to think that it's more than more than that, that it's cheaper than one pound difference. Psychological pricing can also be done in a way where you charge more for a product and that gives a perception of quality. So in other words, you could charge 200 pound for a pair of jeans and people will automatically think that they are really good quality. So the advantages of psychological pricing is it allows you to influence a, a view of a product. So in the example I've just mentioned, if you charge more, it can influence their view of that product to think that it is more like a better quality. It's also potentially attracting customers from competitors because if you knock one pence off or one pound off, it makes it look like yours is a lot cheaper than the competitor. Disadvantages of psychological pricing are nowadays customers are very often aware of this and they don't really fall for this as a trick. Another disadvantage is it's quite difficult to apply any sort of discount to numbers like this. Because if you said what's 10% off 399.99, 99 
it's difficult for people to work that out. Price skimming. Now this gets its name from basically when you when you skim someone, when you are performing a little bit of a rip off. So price skimming is when you charge a very high price and they usually do this when the product is in high demand. So often this can happen when the, the item is either unique or there's very limited competition, but also if there's a big high demand for the product. So in the best example I can think of is the game console that came out at, the Chris, at Christmas time. And both of these, the Sony version and the Microsoft one, were in very, very high demand. So their price was allowed to be a lot higher than it really probably should be. And this price skimming is often used for this type of goods, for high value electronic goods when they first come out. Things like iPhones, when they, the brand new one comes out, the price is a lot higher than the previous model that comes out. The advantages of price skimming is obviously high prices give perception of quality because you automatically assume it's going to be really good. And also you get maximum revenue because while you are selling products at that price, you are making a lot of profit. Disadvantages, sometimes you can price people out of the market. So I know a lot of people probably couldn't afford to buy those consoles last Christmas. And also you lose effect when competitors bring out their lower price products. So for example, if Samsung bring out a new phone that's a lot cheaper than the iPhone, then you're not likely to have as much success. Next one is price penetration. So this is pretty much the opposite of skimming. It's when you bring out your product with a low price and it's usually only for a short period of time. So this is often used for new products where they set things at a trial price. The example shown here is they do this quite a lot for collectible things or for magazines that come out and you have to collect them. The introductory price will be a lot lower than the final price. They also do it with um, things like, not Netflix necessarily, but those type of streaming platforms where you can get it at a trial for a much cheaper price than the long term one. So the advantages of this are that you can increase your market share very quickly because you are joining a new market and your product can start to grow a lot quicker if your prices are low. It will also encourage people to try something which might mean that you get them hooked into that product. Disadvantages is obviously you're not making much money at the beginning. So you're getting a lot of kind of products sold for a low price. And also you can't really use this for products with a short lifespan. So you'll learn about lifespans in another learning outcome, but essentially things like fashion are quite quickly changing. So you couldn't really do a trial price for fashion. So here's a few examples, a new own brand cereal, a new magazine series, a holiday to Spain and PlayStation 5. So in the exam, you would be expected to be given a example product and you will need to pick the best pricing strategy for that. So you need to know all four pricing strategies and you need to know what they are best used for. New own brand cereal, so that would be like Sainsbury's own Rice Krispies or Asda's own Rice Krispies. The best one to use would be competitive pricing because you would compare it with the other supermarkets to see what they are doing. New magazine series would be price penetration because you want people to start buying that magazine and to get them hooked into that magazine. Holiday to Spain, psychological pricing. You quite often see holidays like only 295 or 299 and it makes it look like it's a lot cheaper than 300 pounds but it isn't finally playstation 5 price skimming it's a new technology device so you can charge a higher price because it's in high demand okay that is the four different strategies for pricing if you've got any questions email me and i'll get back to you